We're doing things a lot different today. We're actually standing right in the middle of my living room. We're not gonna be here for the entire video. We're gonna to go to my kitchen next. So we're kind of gonna get a full tour of my house, apparently. But the idea is the Beta FPV Advanced Kit 2. It, it's marketed towards beginners. Like 99% of people that are buying this are beginners. Never step foot in a hobby, have no idea what they're doing. And the first video I did was more of a review, just kind of telling you about it, giving your thoughts and opinions, but not really showing you how to really dive into it and going over the features. So that's what this video is going to be. First off, I've had a few customers have issues when they got it that the transmitter wasn't bound to the, the quad. So that's, well, first off, that sucks. So we're going to show you how to bind it. And it's really an easy process. It's just that the instructions suck. And it took me a little while to figure it out. Once I figured it out though, it really is easy. So we're gonna walk you through how to bind the light transmitter to, to the Meteor 75 quad. And then I wanna kind of walk through what the switches on the transmitter do, how to get it into level mode, acro mode, and then actually how to go into the OSD, change up your VTX power and channels so you know what channel you actually are on and then how to change that channel on the goggles themselves. So it's probably gonna be a long video. I mean, most of the videos I do are pretty long. So thank you guys for sticking through watching all of those videos. And if you're new here, this is your first time here, click the subscribe button, push the bell, get some notifications rolling in. We do reviews, tutorials, things like this video, starting to dabble in vlogs even. So if that's something you're interested in, subscribe, leave us a comment, let us know what you think, and let's dive right into the video. See you in the kitchen. We have the Beta FPV kit, and this is gonna be a mess when I unzip it, because I kinda of just throw everything in here when I was at the park trying to do the same video, and it started raining. So we're gonna need batteries, we're gonna need antennas, we're gonna need a little pokey stick, transmitter, drone, goggles, and we don't need a bag or box, whatever. All right, so when we start, the first thing we wanna do is this light transmitter to actually has a couple different protocols. In order for it to work with the Meteor 75, we need it to be in D8 mode. And in order to do that, it's actually really simple. You got a bind button and a setup button back here on the back. All we wanna do is we wanna hold the bind button down as we turn it on. And then as we turn it on, we hold the bind button down until we see a red light. Once we see that red light, we can let go of the bind button. And what we want to do is count the flashes. So hold the bind button down, turn it on. Starts coming on, you can let go. We got one flash. We actually want to have three flashes, so we'll turn it back off. And repeat the process. Hold the bind button down, turn it on. Keep holding, let go. We got two flashes that time, turn it back off. And this last time. Three flashes, so that is in D8 mode. We don't need to turn this off again, we can leave it there. Now this is where it gets a little tricky if you're not, you know, if you have a friend it might make it a little bit easier. But on the bottom of the drone here, there's two little buttons. You got a bind button on this side, and then whatever this button is over here, which doesn't matter because we don't need that. We just need this bind button. So the idea is you want to hold the bind button down as you plug the battery in. You can do it. I mean, we're going to watch me do it right now by myself. In order to get this in the bind mode, we're going to ease the battery in here without really plugging it in. So just barely stick the battery in, hold the bind button down, Plug the battery in fully, flip the transmitter over, click the bind button. You'll see it start to flash over here. You'll see the fast flashing on the drone. That means it's bound. We can unplug it, plug it back in, flip it over, let it initialize. And then you can actually test it by just flipping your arm switch, which is right here, and then right back off. So that bound. So just to summarize real quick, because it happens pretty quickly, we wanna have this in a D8 mode. In order to get it to D8 mode, you have to have it turned off, hold the bind button in as you power it on. 
once it comes on you'll see a red flash you can let go of the bind button count the number of flashes the flashes once turn it off do it two more times so turn it on as you hold the bind button in count two flashes turn it off turn it on as you hold the bind button in count three flashes that puts this into d8 mode once you're into d8 mode on the underside of your drone there's two buttons the one on the right over here is the bind button you want to hold that down as you plug the battery in as soon as you plug the battery in while holding the bind button down let go of it your transmitter is still turned on flip it over click the bind button this light starts flashing the lights on the bottom of the drone start flashing really fast once they flash really fast you know that means that it just bound unplug it plug it back in you're good to go all right, so the first thing I want to do before we get started showing switches is actually how to get the channels speaking correctly between the drone and the goggles. So you can push the search button. So on the goggles, there's a search button right here. If you click that search button, it's actually going to get you close. It's not going to, it might get you dead on, but most of the time, from my experience, it, it's usually close. Sometimes it is. I, I don't want to... Anyway. So in order to get into the OSD where we can actually change the channel on the drone, on your controller here, bring the throttle stick to the center, bring it all the way to the left, and then your right stick, your right stick here we want to actually push up. So you can see on the screen it comes into this menu here. So in this menu we want to go up to Smart Audio. And once you get up to it, so everything is being changed with the right stick, press right to go into it, Channel we can change that channel. So go to the right, you can see it goes B2, B3, go to the left, B1, A8. So it'll actually go through all of the different channel combinations. I'm just gonna leave it on B1 because it works and it's been fine so far. So power mode, it comes set at 25 milliwatt. I always bump mine up to 200 milliwatt just because I'm always flying by myself. And then come down to set and right on the right stick to set that and then come down to back and you can push right again. There's a lot of other things in here. This flies really good right out of the box. There's really no reason to change mid or mids, pids, motors, receiver, nothing really like I, I leave it all alone. Everything that I do with this has been stock other than changing the channels and the power on the VTX. Now rates, you can come in here and increase the rates what that's going to do is kind of increase or decrease the responsiveness of the drone as you're flying again we're not really doing any of that in this video just save and it brings you back so now for the switches so the switches obviously you have four switches here across the top you have the sc the sd you have an s a and an sb so SA, that is your arm switch. So if we flip it, you can see the drone arms and disarm. So you pull SA towards you, turns it on, SA away from you, turns it off. So that's your kill switch, that's your safety switch, that's your arm switch. Easy and simple. Now, for flight modes. So your flight modes are different. You have three switches, SD, SC, and SB. Depending on kind of how those three switches are set, you can see in the bottom right of our DVR, it says level right now. So that is quite literally with SC pushed away from us, SB pulled towards us, SD pressed away. And yes, they all three have to be set up like that in order for it to work. If we actually pull SC towards us, you can see in the bottom right it changes to race a and what race a is is kind of like an acro mode where what is race a had to fly around a little bit to figure it out couldn't remember so the way the switches are set up they have to be set up like this so sd pressed away sc pressed away sb pulled towards you and when they're set up like that, that is actually a level mode. You can see at the bottom right of the, the OSD screen. So we didn't talk about horizon mode at all in this entire video, and I'm actually editing and almost done. So real quick, horizon mode is pretty much a self-level mode that allows you to do flips and rolls. And whenever you let go of the right stick, so you slam it to the right, 
all the way it'll roll to the right when you let go of that right stick it will actually self-level so it's kind of like a hybrid between acro mode and self-level mode so in order to do that if we have sb pulled towards us sc pushed away sd pushed away that's self-level mode to get in horizon mode it is simply just pull sd towards you it flips it in the horizon mode and you can jump in and try out that flight mode and now we will get back to the rest of the video if we pull sc towards us it doesn't matter if it's one click or two you can see the bottom right of it changes to race a now this is a different flight mode i don't know if any other drones are really using this but beta fp had beta fpv has it in this one so race a is kind of like a partial acro mode partial stabilization mode so your vertical axis so up and down on your right stick acts like acro mode so if you bump it forward just a little bit the drone will change its angle so if you bump it forward just a little bit the drone will change its angle and hold it there and then you actually have to correct for it to level it back out now right and left in race a if you bump it right and let go it'll bump right and it'll auto level back uh, that's uh, like i said it's a different it's a it's a different type of flight mode and actually if we switch so with sc pull towards us if you pull sd towards you you can see it changes to race h race h is kind of the same in a sense where your vertical axis so you know, up and down on the right stick will work as an angle mode so when you let go it's going to hold its attitude until you correct for it where your horizontal axis acts more like a horizon mode to if you hold it to the right it'll actually fully flip when you let go it'll self level in race a if you hold it fully right or fully left it's got a bank angle limiter to where it's not going to actually roll on the horizontal axis i really don't know who that's made for personally i would never use it but uh, hey it's a it's a feature and it's that's what we're talking about so just a review sd switched away from us sc switched away from us sb pulled towards us is level mode the easiest way to figure any of this out is to look in the bottom right of that osd screen it's going to tell you what mode you're in and once you get used to it like for me even now i really don't know what mode i'm in by the switches i look in the bottom right of the osd screen to figure it out so in order to get into acro mode that's this sb switch over here if we push it away from us it will say acro so for me if i'm flying and i want to go into acro mode i push all three of these switches away from me and that puts it in acro mode it's a weird situation to where if you're in one of the race modes and you switch to acro mode it'll actually stay in the race mode but once you're in acro mode it won't switch into race mode unless you switch out of acro mode with your sb switch so with all that being said if you want to go in acro mode sb sc sd push them all away so now once you're in acro mode this is how you can get to turtle mode fairly simple is you press all three of these switches away from you so you press sb sc and sd away from you and then sc you pull it back towards you and then once you pull that one back towards you you can see on the screen it says turtle and when it's in turtle mode let's flip you over when it's in turtle mode the throttle does not do anything like this is disabled your right stick however you can see how it winds up motors so depending on which way you need to flip you just use your right stick and it'll flip it back over and that is again sb away sd away sc towards you it shows you right on the screen turtle so it makes it easy to get back into level mode push this away from us pull sb towards us and then with sd pushed away it shows level mode on the screen again and that's pretty much all there is to it like i said it does get a little confusing on the switches but if you're watching the osd in the bottom right of the screen it's not really difficult it's just a matter of flipping those three switches and then sa is your arm and disarm switch all right so if you're one of the people that had asked those questions i hope this video helped you out a lot and just like this video if you have any questions concerns anything doesn't make sense leave a comment that's where well literally all of this video came from comments in other videos people asking asking questions either comments of videos or emails to support at buddyrc.com 
Speaking of Buddy RC, if you are looking for the advanced kit too, we have them in stock on BuddyRC.com, so go there. There's a couple podcasts out there as well, so RC Scrap Pile, if you look them up, or RC After Hours, them as well. They actually have discount codes for Buddy RC, so you could literally go and listen to those podcasts, figure out what the discount codes are, come back and get a discount on the advanced kit too. So if you do that, let them know that uh, you came from here. So otherwise, thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Come back and see us on the next one, and we'll catch you then. Bye.